connection first, but okay, so yeah, okay. So, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to uh, Points of Light. I am Nordwarnuk, and once again, I'm the dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. And hence, uh, Travis really have a uh, yelling with back says, Dungeons and Dragons! <laughs> So, yeah, so, um, as before, um, got some bad, uh, got some unfortunate news, um, I've told Cole that he will not be, uh, at least 20, uh, for at least a, uh, module or two, because of that, uh, of the fact, uh, of his recent, uh, behavior, long story short, I've explained in, in my tweet, in, in, in a, in a short Twitter thread, and in the last, um, session. I do hope the- uh. I hope he comes back soon, cause Cole's good people. Cole's good people. I know, but and, you know, we, hey, we all have off days. I know, but there's just there's just a point that it just crosses the line. You know what I mean? Fair enough. <clears throat> Alrighty, so time for a recap. Uh, so uh, originally we will have Frey with us, but for some reason she hasn't uh she hasn't responded. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no indeed. Oh no indeed. Oh no indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing Baymax. What's your excuse? I just want to be funny. <laughs> I was just trying to add a little levity to the proceedings. Yeah. Okay, so. Enough of the derailing, uh, uh, despite uh, despite me just being f uh, funny about it. So, recap, so the, on the last time, uh, Celeste, Orak, and Lonnie basically, uh, basically worked together with uh, with the other two groups in investigating uh, in investigating this uh, this establishment called the Elysium, uh, where uh, uh, like uh, where uh, where they uh, where they ventured deep into uh, into it to find. An engine run by this uh, a former warforged who became part of a machine called the Sea Elysium. It's uh, the uh, former warforged Radix intended to intend to use the machine to add uh, more people to uh, well, or lack of a better word, to the uh, to the Lord of Blades army via transferring the souls or and possibly the minds of war unsuspecting warforged who are who want to have a mortal body to set mortal bodies. And uh, just and just and uh, using the shells, uh, as again, to add them to the Lord of Blades armies. Our heroes, our uh, our temperate heroes and adventurers, have put an end uh, to it, while Cole has el elected upon himself to disable it, and in hopes in working with other organizations in, in um, studying what uh, and studying it, and learn what he could, uh, when, and learn what he could do without along with uh, House Kenneth, the Trust, and other organizations. In a surprising turn of events, Lork, the, uh, the the deceased, or should I say, former deceased inquisitive who was looking into the matter, somehow uh, has somehow escaped from the dead, but in a different body. He is still him. All uh, all the faculties in place, but no longer have work. With uh, with everything, uh, with House Kenneth and these organizations have uh, have learned as much as they know. They deemed it to be. Too dangerous to uh, to uh, be left uh, alone, uh, lest someone else would reactivate it and the whole process would start again. So, Lord ha uh, uh, has taken it upon himself to um, destroy it, much to Cole's displeasure. Um, on the w on the way, uh, uh, be uh, on the w uh, so, so he decided to take it upon himself to um, uh, salvage what what he could. Uh, and see if he can work with uh, Antiano uh, the Kenneth. Basically, this uh, might take on uh, Tony Stark from the Marvel stuff. On the uh, uh, so, so on the so before you set off, he sent you a a letter to uh, to you, Celeste, Lonnie, and Orak. Want me to read out loud uh, what it says? Sure. <laughs> to call. Orak, Monty, and Celeste. Your sources have spoken highly of you. Until of recent accomplishments have crested even the highest peak of the Star Peaks. 
in swift trepidation and hope that I write to you. My name is Ilda Avi Lucina, and I find myself the remaining sound mind within Star Peak's observatory. Let me be frank. The researchers are in desperate need of your assistance. They do not dare write the details upon this parchment, as they do not know what is safe. Will you speak when you arrive? I can promise you compensation, and, des uh, and desperately beg your deliverance from these concerns. Please arrive quickly. It is almost complete. That is what that is what the letter said when Cole has handed it to you. Celeste reads it. Hold on, kids. <laughs> Mama Bear's coming. And Cole's like, that was the only letter. Come on. <laughs> Celeste on yeah, Celeste uncrumples it, smooths it out on her arm, and hands it back. Here you go, you baby. Uh, by the way, have you heard what happened uh, with with the Elysium? I'm not happy about it. What what hap what happened with Steel Elysium? It got destroyed by this moron Lork. <sighs> Celeste rubs the bridge of her nose. I'll be. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can. Uh, if I can uh, salvage what uh, what was mine. But the future is uh, it's down there in Kyber. I'm gonna have a few words with whoever uh, whoever set this up. And he walks off. You do. You do that, brother. Lonnie, uh, Oric, what do you say? To, uh, what do you think about this? A lot of wasted effort trying to keep it intact. Uh, annoyed, but we have other things to deal with right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. All right. You make your way. Uh, so you make the, uh, your way uh, to the Star Peak uh, Mountains by basically by way of. Uh, Train. I'm looking at the map, so give me a second. Um, yeah, by uh, by way of uh, lightning rail. It took, it took yeah. Choo choo. Well, days have, uh, days have pa uh, days have passed, and you went through as quickly as as you could. Uh, once you arrive, uh, you um, yeah. Once you arrive to the nearest um stop, you make uh, your way there by uh by uh by carriage. And the music is a little intense. Whoops. Oh well. Uh, you arrive at Tears of Vigil, a uh, a small uh, settlement uh, with uh, sturdy huts, with uh, large greenery in the screen. Well, it, it's 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 right now, um, you know, during um, sometime around uh, spring. So the the so the uh, landscape is quite green with. Um, yeah, with plenty of plenty of huts, like I said, you right you right there, and uh, uh, you see uh, you see this the uh, oh, this, oh, the uh, uh, some peaks mountains just nearby. You can and up in the distance, you can see uh, the observatory, your destination. And yeah, Mama, <laughs> yeah, Celeste leans on her great keep gatekeeper staff as she's looking at this thing. I think Mama brought her nine iron. Uh, Lonnie's uh, going to take a quick uh, look around. Uh, are th there, there's a number of huts. Uh, is are there very many civilians walking around? Is there much activity, or is it currently quiet despite the? Uh, it, it is midday, but it, it is midday, but it's unusually unusually quiet. And out of nowhere, you hear a faint howl in the distance. It's a really good thing Mama brought her nine iron. <laughs> you also, uh, while exploring around the town, you also see a tavern as well as an emporium. Uh, a shop, in other words. You were saying, Aura? I was just saying... So, uh, oh, sorry, I no, oh, I was just saying he, he doesn't like the and, that sound. Yeah, so, 
Would you like to explore the village or press on ahead? Probably a good idea to get some information at the tavern first. Alrighty, you. Um, what does everyone th uh, else say? If they could uh, wait. If they could wait for the train ride. They could probably wait at least a few more minutes so we get, while we get our bearings and get an idea of what the uh, people around have noticed. Yeah, uh, you have arrived. You're, you're after arrived. And, ma and frankly, mama's gonna need. <laughs> mama's gonna need a stiff drink. <sighs> Indeed. As because th this, because that observer, she just looked at the observatory, and Celeste has got the heebies with a side order of jeebies. <laughs> Indeed. Um. So, uh, Celeste, you arrive at a cozy tavern near the Halley Winds um, Inn. You see a, a half elf who looks to be in her late, uh, late, uh, late thirties, uh, working on, uh, like working on attending the bar, wiping on the uh, counter on her counter. She has a round, freckled face, with uh, with uh, with some sharp ears. She she looks out at you and seems a little taken back by your appearance, but um, <laughs> but uh, she shrugs it off with a smile. Hello, hello there. Uh, Fendrel, uh, uh, if you're at your service, might I order you something, or maybe, so or maybe someone. Celeste Joe, Celeste Joe, star at yours. Um, what do you got? He what do you got here that's good to drink? Oh, whiskey, ale, uh, wine if you're, if you're into that stuff, and some water, along with some other drinks. <laughs> with all some other drinks. I'll, t I'll take I'll take your finest ale, barkeep. Alrighty, uh, let me count uh, how much that cost. Ale, uh, for, uh, four copper pieces, please. And, oh, by the way, word gets around town, uh, word gets around town. Celeste tosses her. Celeste tosses the tosses the innkeeper a gold galifar. Keep the change, honey. A, a gold piece. You are generous, my lady. I try. Um, for the rest of you, Lonnie Ark, would you like to roll a history check? History or investigation? Yeah, sure. And investigation in the meantime. Uh, and and a history as well, as well if you're if you're up to it. Oh, history! That's a that's a skill. Oh, I have, oh, I have training in that skill. Go All ahead. Right. Or, uh, profi or proficiency. So nineteen plus eleven, so thirty for history. <laughs> Holy shit! Nice. Holy shit! Okay. And I got, and I got uh, thirteen plus five, so I got a eighteen on that. So I got I an 18 on that roll. Lordy, you I did a lot of homework on the on your destination. It's called Tyr's Vigil because it is named after Dasgaran statue of Tyr um, Myron, the first prophet of the Silver Flame, and a hero for for the uh, people of Eberron. Yeah, as and as far as you know, the people of Tyr's Vigil are hardy and strong. <laughs> Don't worry, they're good people. As soon as that, as soon as that beer, as soon as that beer come, um, Celeste is taking a swig because, well, she doesn't have very good experiences with the Church of the Silver Flame. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. An old girl, an old girlfriend. Her parents were, uh, really were you know stick in the mud religious fundamentalists. Huh. Interesting. So I guess it's not quite like my my divine flame, then, is it? Yeah. So um, while you are investigating, so Lonnie, Orc, are you at the tavern or are you somewhere else? Uh, I'll be at the tavern until I get uh, until I get all the information I can. Then I'm going going to probably ask a few a few of the people I can find on the street. Uh, assuming there is much traffic on the street. Um, Celeste, you, you also find that you're not the only customer here. You see a, a human man who's a freaking customer. A freaking, freaking customer. You approach him? First I ask the barkeep, what's he having? Uh, same, uh, same as you, an ale. Uh, same as you, an ale. 
I'm gonna put put it on my t oh, put a put an ale for him on my tab. She's gonna buy yeah. She's gonna buy him a she's gonna buy him a drink before before she but yeah before she chats him up. Good idea. Uh, I, he knows he knows an appreciation and with a smile too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he he says being a little uh, twitchy. <sighs> you he, he, seem a little on edge, my friend. He knows how his eyes seem seem a little a little baggy. Uh, I've been having and... these uh, these really bad dreams. He says, oh, "You poor thing." And <laughs> Celeste is in <laughs> Celeste is in full mommy mode now. Uh, Lonnie, asked... on the other hand, will ask for details. What type? What type of dream? What are you seeing? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. But they're bad. Uh, if you bad ask... dream, don't make him re don't make him relive the trauma, you idiot. Hey. The supernatural can have impacts on the subconscious. This is important information if we can get anything. Just all I remember is just having this splitting headache and stars. Just I just saw fishing stars being being snuffed out. It's a sign that the Ethel Flames is pleased with us, I tell ye. Hmm. Hold that thought. Let me write this down. Okay, continue. You do that, Sparky. Yeah, that's it's it's just this repeating dream over and over and over. Silverfly is not happy with us, I tell you. And if it's not the if it's not the flame, what else could it be? Something this. <laughs> Something that your town's founder would have set up his vigil to defend against. Which... But what do I? But what do I know? I'm just I'm just the local angel, Bimbo. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, uh, and uh, Lonnie yeah. and uh, Ork, you, you also like wander around town trying to gather information. You also came okay. upon a uh, tief a tiefling named. Discre uh, in discussion, he greets you with a smile and says, "Might I, uh, might, uh, might I ask you some information? Uh, money for information, if that would be, um, yes, this is this is what she says, would will, will, will be suffice. You're in like a bit of a shady part of town, alleyways, and and like, if being packed between huts would count as an alleyway." Or I could kind of. Looks at the tiefling because of the fact that he's got this de demonic heritage, it's quite unnerving to him given what he where he comes from and what he does. I, so I, he kind of looks at Lanny to uh, to see what uh, to see what she does. Sure thing. Okay. Uh, Lanny tries to get things relatively smooth out the back one. Finally, someone relatively normal and pleasant looking around here. Perhaps you can help us with a little bit of information of what you can, of uh, the local goings on. You look like you know your way around. Hmm. I can give you something for 25 gold and maybe something more for 100 gold. I'll need a bit more details on something more. Going in blind is not, not a exactly great expenditure of cash. Well, uh, gold for information. That's my job. She uh, she smiles. I thought. Wait, wasn't Lonnie at the tavern with Celeste? But yeah, I so was. yeah, Lonnie and Or decide to like leave the tavern as if that's okay. Or yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering whether or not Celeste is looking at this because she. Probably isn't, and if she was, she'd probably just up to you. Uh, up to you, Celeste. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's assume that. Uh, yeah. L yeah. Lonnie and Lonnie and yeah. Celeste left the tavern with the. Uh, yeah. With her. Com her companions. She's talking to the tiefling right now. Oh, you. And she counts. She counts out. Uh, she counts out a hundred. 
Nerd Galifars, you idiots are lucky I'm rich. I think uh, she, she she takes the gold, uh, subtracts 100 gold from your, uh, and subtracts 100 gold from your character sheet. Thank you. Well, <sighs> there's something strange going on with the researchers up, the, up, up, up at the observatory. And, well, I can tell you who they are. It's Rose Tafriel, uh, head researcher there. Um, also a little, uh, he talks quite a bit, always seems a little fuzzy. There's also a Jocelyn Stone Swarm, that dwarf, that female dwarf engineer at the place. Really good with it, oh, as, as, an, as her job implies, uh, the mechanical mind of the team. Implies him to be around, but not very talkative. Uh, Fari, on the other hand, Tiefling, like me, and, well, he is quite interested in some certain types of magic. Dark magic. He's been buying books from uh, for the uh, North Peaks Imperium. It it was uh, it uh, yeah it was the head researcher and the map mathematician that that dragonborn, Arkak. They they have a beginning along. They oh, whatever yeah. they, these two these two people get uh, get together. The tension in the air rises, and you always. And I always get this nasty feeling that they make their break out into a fight, at worst, or an argument. So, you've said that they're acting unusually. However, the descriptions you just gave of their behavior, is that their current behavior or their unusual behavior? Current behavior. Um, so how would they normally behave if that if this is considered that, that, unusual? That's, that's their unusual behavior, but they're unusual. But the way they act, they seem to literally be out of a... A little out of it. They seem to be talking about some sort of uh, great discovery, great revelation going up at the at the uh, observatory. Do they seem as if they have trepidation about it, or is it anxiety, or is it genuine uh, some genuine, enthusiasm? Uh, uh, some uh, some genuine. They're quite they're quite enthusiastic. I hear that the, that the female orc has has traveled to the observatory, carries a staff. She looks at you, orc. What? Wait, female orc? What does she look like? Uh, act as DM. I'm going to ask, have to ask you what she looks like. Uh, okay. Well, um, she uh, she is a divine priestess, a Cortasha. Um, so she tends to wear sort of you know. Not quite like elegant robes that would be found in a typical temple or anything like that, but yeah. you know, just basically a robe-like uh, outfit with emblems of the divine flame um, yeah. scattered in various parts of it. Yeah, she, she gave me the impression that she looks like a priest of the civil flame. Not entirely sure. Is that? Uh, does that? Yeah, that would. Does that, uh, uh, this is me speaking as as, as um this section. Does, does that mean any anything? She just looks a little suspicious. Ever since she got here, things turn her when it turned for the strange. When did she? When did she? When did she uh, get to this? Uh... Uh, a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. We yeah, have it... to go there. We have to go there. She might still be there. I agree. If, at the very least, she's almost certainly close to the core of whatever is going on here. Oh, and before you go, Ida, uh, she has, I've seen this Ida hiding uh, scars and bruises. She may be into trouble. Well, good thing we're troubleshooters. See trouble, and we shoot it. I want to know I've... more about what's going on at the Emporium. They also have been buying some, some, uh, some strange, uh, some strange materials, metals to be exact. Do you have it go on what? What? Uh, do you say metals or mammals? Metals. M e t a l. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what particular metals are we talking about? Uh, I... Platinum, uh, uranium. Like. No, I do not recognize the materials. Uh, the shop. They look so.
something but it looks something like this and celeste draws the, yeah she, celeste also has her uh bs short sword at her belt which she draws and now shows to the tiefling she scratches her head i'm not entirely sure that uh in the end that dwarven that guy who runs the shop might know more hmm do we want to stop by there first or shall we head, head straight to the observatory Celeste, Celeste, she's, she, she's her BS short sword and says, maybe it would be a good, good idea to head to the Emporium first. More inform, more information we have going in the better, and or don't worry, Orak, your lady friend can wait. She's waited this long. She's not waiting for me. He's not. Getting, oh dear! And once again, and once again, and once again, Celeste has a white knuckle grip on her gatekeep on her gatekeeper staff. Her time's a charm. A thing, Mama brought her nine iron. Is there such thing as a nine iron in uh, everyone? No, but she hangs. But she hangs out with goofballs from other worlds. So that's just one more. Or thing that's gonna go over her, go over her companions' heads. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Is that is that what uh, Orak uh, Lonnie? Is that what she is, is that what she did? Like, give her strange looks each time when she when she mentions an I nine iron. Honestly, okay. Orak doesn't really pay much attention to her. <laughs> and Lonnie's Lonnie grew up around the trust where basically uh, people saying things with, without meaning or trying to do double speak don't really uh, don't just doesn't really phase her. So she just accepts it and moves on. Do you want to stop by the Emporium first? We may as well. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, on the way, you seem to, uh, you pass by what seems to be a middle-aged, uh, perhaps, a dragonborn in, um, sturdy armor. He appears to be the leader of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the guard watch here. And Celeste, get, and Celeste definitely gives him him a flirtatious wink because yeah, she knows a dragonborn back home, one of her boyfriends. Um, he stares. He just like stares at you a little confused and um, blankly. <sighs> I guess you don't get many ASMRs around here, do you, hot stuff? No, it's the fact that you were flirty at me. I'm doing my job here. <laughs> Uh, oh, I Lon don't mean to keep you from your work, hon. So, uh, Lonnie goes ahead and apo apologizes for uh, C uh, Celeste and goes, "We we're just passing through. We are looking for any information we can get about the uh, local observatory and the apparently odd goings on. Have you heard anything? Do you often get calls to go investigate that area?" Well, persuasion check. Uh, which check? Persuasion. Okay, dope. Celeste, would you like to help him? Uh, help them? I might... I might... I might as well... Uh, what's the, uh, skill check we're rolling here? Uh, persuasion. Huh. You bet your ass I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be having... I'm gonna be, uh... Help, I'm gonna be helping with that. Alright, who's gonna no, be rolling I'm... with, uh, persuasion with advantage? Whoever has the highest charisma, I'd say, since otherwise I'd be doing it with just my. That'll be that'll be that'll be Celeste. She's got the capped charisma score. Yeah, you're pretty much oh. you're, pre, you're pretty much uh, in, uh, almost an equal with Bree's um, persuasion. Just saying. Um, uh, I, I have does, persuasion. That is a twenty-six on that uh, persuasion check. Uh, uh, help at all. It helps. He scratches around his jawline, his long jawline. You know, he's a dragon board. Hmm. I'm quite concerned about. You know about the researchers up at the observatory? We've been hearing things. So have I. I'm, I'm worried about it. They haven't been returning uh, uh, since, uh, uh, since uh, a couple days ago. Oh dear. They also they also had been working with uh w with the armorer around here as well. Dolomis Black uh, Black Iron. 
you might know uh you might know more yes uh, we we're considering going there in a bit uh have you noticed any strange deliveries or behavior among the townsfolk since the since the observatory st started going on uh, whatever revelations they seem to be doing not that i know of but the emporium uh, might, uh, might, uh, might uh my my point in the right direction i think they gave me some strange shipments metals glass pictures from all over the, the continent. As a member of the Guard, I would assume you've had at least some ability to examine the, sh the shipment notifications. Uh, do you happen to know what types of metals are being sent? I do, but I do not recognize them. Some of them... Celeste once again draws her best short sword, but, you know, not in a threatening manner, and, huh. and, shows, and shows it to him. Would the metal happen to look like this? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe. Metallurgy is not my, uh, specialty. I'm- I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, the blade of the sword is purple, so... Hmm... I do recognize the, the metal. Not sure if, it, if it's been delivered to the observatory. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that uh, the armor might know more. Celeste, she's the what? She's she's the weapon. Well, it's like we're talking to him next. Thank you, hun. You've been a big help. Mm. It's, it's been a pleasure, ma'am. Stay out of trouble. You do so. Alrighty, so you got two destinations in mind aside from the observatory. You got the North Peaks uh, Emporium and the uh, blacksmith. Um, which is closer? Um, they're around the same distance. All right, we may as well do a circuit. We'll do the Emporium, then the Blacksmith, and then head up to the Observatory. All right, you, uh, you, you head off to this old and cop scene of shop, which is like, um, filled with what you might find for a bunch of beginner um, adventurers. But you are not exactly beginner adventurers by any chance. There's, there's also, it also is a bit of a, a bookstore, and you see this uh, bushy young dwarven uh, male just tapping a little anxiously at the uh, uh, at uh, at the uh, um, what's it called the desk? Front counter. Front counter. At the front counter, he looks up to you and says, "Hey, hey there. It's it's been a bit of a quiet day, but not the best kind of quiet." Have you heard about, uh, have you heard that weird Halloween earlier? Just me? Yes. No? He heard it as we came into town. Yes, I needed a drink. Would you happen to have any idea what type of, what type of creature was making that noise? Are, are uh, wolves come to the area, or is it some other creature? Some other creature, if rumors have it right. As far as I, uh, I saw one of them, and they seem to have... Antlers. And it looks like the way it's called for masks, I think. I do not know how they managed to howl like a wolf or something. I the thought just like <laughs> Inquiry. We're we're I well these sounds, I'm sorry, what had the sounds had the sounds primarily been around the ma mountain range. And quite and near the uh, silver uh, silver wood. Word is something mm. is going on over at that forest, but something came out of that forest. I, I should correct myself. Have there been any word of disappearances lately? No, only so uh, so uh, so far only something like you know uh just just wildlife. Thankfully, no. Oh, uh, thankfully, no. Uh, just like sight. Uh, we all just like. Sorry, I'm just a little frazzled lately. So, forgive me. That's fine. I'm I'm it's ensuring okay, that fine. what we are dealing with is not, say, a Wendigo. That would be most unclement. Oh, a Wendigo. <laughs> he he shivers. <sighs> the shivers in fear. Well, I take it you hear about these uh, about what's been going on at the observatory. Yes, that's why we are here, actually. Uh, let me see if I can get the if I can get the list. He walks to the back of the store, hands you the list. Do these, uh... Uh, does it look anything, um... 
I, I've worked... Here, I hope it can help. Okay, what does it say? Um... It says golden, uh, gleaming golden uh, metals, uh... You quite, uh, you, you don't recognize the, t the type of uh, metals. Like... But, uh, but, uh, but just, uh, but you see a picture of it, and, and you see, like, golden, looks like, these ignis looks like gold. Hmm. Well, it's definitely not Biesk. <sighs> and you, and you've already said, essentially, that we don't recognize it, like, there's no checks we can do to see if we recognize it. Uh... It's fine if we don't, I'm just confirming that A world intelligence before. check. Okie doke. 23. 18 they, plus 5. They seem to come, uh, um, you can probably guess that they are some sort of meteorites. Um, probably from one, uh, probably from one of the, um, uh, from, yeah. Probably made of, of something that Cyberus, uh, Dragon Shards, that, because they also tend to be, uh, to look, uh, uh, they tend to be uh, gold as well, but they don't seem to come as metallic. Hmm. I'll make a note to see if while we're doing investigations, I can get get a hold on some of it. Uh, do do some of our own tests. Alrighty, Orak. Uh, Celeste. Are we <laughs> yeah, Celeste is all. Oh, you got the camera. You got the chemistry set, hun. Wait, do you have a chemistry set? I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I don't have a chemistry set, but I do. I can always head home and you know, then work from there. It's called alchemy, which is basically a precursor of um, chemistry. Just, just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's that's what it meant. Yeah, do you have an alchemist? Yeah, that's what. Celeste meant to say is, yeah, do you have an alchemist laboratory? Back in my home, I most certainly. I wonder if my ship is still on harbor. Celeste. Celeste giggles. Celeste giggles. Yeah, I know. A, I know a guy who likes to play who likes to play with beakers and test tubes. Oh, a couple of them, actually. Do you want to make your way to the uh, gruff arm uh, uh, to the armorer, or are you ready to head off? Uh, let's go ahead and get let's to get to the armorer. Armor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, definitely well, going to the armorer. You, you see, uh, you see, uh, you see this gruff armor uh, wearing uh, this um, brownish apron, just like hammer right on his ankle. Ting, ting, ting. He seems to be uh, very focused on his work, just like uh, there's like uh, mending a. Uh, uh, a suit of uh, plate armor. Sh uh, just like shaping it. He sobs as he as he hears you stepping in. Uh. Uh, hello there. What can I get you? I'm um, uh, Dylan is Black Iron, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Celeste Joestar, likewise. We are here. We are here because we are investigating the observatory the observatory on in the mountain in the nearby mountain range um here there has been a lot of uh strange strange metals being shipped there yeah i sketched out a bit of a telescope for uh i have some sketches for ilda for the construction of the telescope no i, I tried studying them no idea what it could be used for here uh, he, he walks off and grabs some uh, uh, a bit of a small sack of papers and hands it to you. Okay, uh, Lonnie will quickly will quickly uh, rummage through them and s uh, see what what I can gleam. Okay. Uh, as for the metals, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know what? Uh, they don't glow like a Cyberus Dragon Shard. If you catch my drift, they do resemble a little bit like uh, no, like them. Not sure why, though. Um, Celeste, you were saying something? Mm, uh, n no, I, I wasn't actually. <laughs> oh, touch yourself, right. spooky! I feel like I'm gonna say uh, like uh, James Anthony's from uh, Dead Meat, spooky. Oh dear. 
uh, Lania um, goes ahead and asks if Orok has any uh, experience with uh, metallurgy or uh, experience oh. given their mar- their martial nature. Sorry, uh, there, there, there's a bit of an echo right there, so... Anyway, so Orak, do you recognize the uh, metal? Um, can I roll to check to see if I can recognize it? Go ahead and roll a, uh... Nature check, I think? I really should have specified it in the first place. So oh, well. Okay. Um... Are you trained in, uh, in um, nature? Not really, no. Oof. I'm trained in, I'm trained in survival, religion, perception, medicine, intimidation, and athletics. It's not really something. I'm, I'm more, I'm more experienced in the practice of wielding metals than. Uh, and that's fair enough. Alrighty, yeah. never mind then. So. Actually, but, but it was a shot in the dark. Um, yeah, shot in the dark. That that is perfectly fair. Yeah, uh, I just basically look at him and says. It's metal. You wear it. What do you, what, what you want? Mm. Oh, that is fair. <laughs> that is fair. Oh, I'm just still oh, armorer. How much of the supply has been getting shipped recently? Have you been, is there a significant amount, or has it only been trace? Mm. Trace recently. Well, tra- uh, trace recently, but then the ship has just stopped. You mentioned a telos- you mentioned a telescope. Uh, I would assume an observatory have already had one. Uh, you so you were giving the indication that they are making a new one. Yeah, but ever since that female orc has arrived, things haven't been right. Can you give us any more information on this orc? Uh, my companion uh, seems to have their suspicions that they are a familiar, familiar being. Uh... He only tells you as much as um this uh a little a little less just you know, just as work that way that carries a uh, staff. You know, carved in runes, I think. Weird looking runes. All right. Do you recognize? Uh, well, yeah. uh, do you recognize the, uh, the runes that he is describing? I didn't realize he was describing any runes. He just said he, he was, it, it seems to have uh, vaguely coming off some sort of demonic, like some sort of demonic twisted first. A lot like abyssal, abyssal runes. Abyssal runes, yeah. Abyssal yeah, runes. because I because I do actually speak abyssal. So um, so if he kind of if, if he drew the if he if he remembers the runes and kind of drew what they kind of looked like, you know. I, you can show you can uh, show them to me and okay. It was a little, little bit of interpretation. He grabs some blank papers and gives them to you. Okay. Do I recognize what they say? Uh, no. Uh, they're more like uh, symbols, connotations for self, uh, for. That relates to uh, that relates to demons, demonology. Th- uh, something relates to the demon wastes. Hmm. The wonder things have been going wrong here. And something These about are certainly abyssal rooms. And something about this. <laughs> and also another uh, of note. Something that relates to an overlord. Overlord. Your character might have recognized it. If you could, you can you go ahead and roll a religion check. That would be an eighteen. All right, give me a second, Overlord Eberron. As this as far as you know, they are what uh, if what you remember is right. The first, two children of Kyber. Front from well, Kyber, uh, one of the uh, uh, for, uh from one of the parts of the dragons, the, th- the three ones, uh, the three dragons, ten million years ago, they ruled over uh the lesser fiends, turned them into demons. But, however, the children of Cyberus and Eberron joined forces to rid the world of uh the overlords and their uh, fiends and demons, and their former minions, the Westash, Westashgras, are. 
might be plotting something to free the overlords, and them, and your uh, mate might be in cohorts with them, whether willingly or not. Uh, to you, this is all just a th uh, theory with your uh, mate. <sighs> Well, this is a little personal for you, isn't it, Orak? More than a little personal, yes. Yeah, <laughs> understatement. Alrighty. I've been hunting. I've been hunting her since since before I met anyone in this group. Hope we will be bringing that to a close soon. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> we said the same thing. And, Cel and, Cel and, and, and Celeste gives Orak a hug. Do you accept it, Orak? I don't move. I just kind of stay kind of pretty stiff while she's doing that because it's not something he is very used to. Yeah, it's 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 yeah more of a hug of affection it's ah oh, come here mama's gonna make it all better do we really want to do this in front of the armorer yeah what afraid what afraid he's gonna enjoy the show anyways <laughs> celeste giggles at her own <laughs> celeste giggles at her own dirty joke uh i push I kind of bring my arms out and kind of try to break the hug and move aside all right all right <laughs> shall we shall we proceed to the observatory then do do let's and and Celeste kind of cockily slings her slings her gatekeeper staff over her shoulder just, just remind me how big is Celeste she's six feet tall Right, because she's trying to because she's trying to hug an orc just so she's a woman. <laughs> she's a woman. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah, yeah. Six, yeah, six feet tall, and you know she's an e cup. So she wasn't trying to. At least she wasn't trying to ensconce you in marshmallow hell. <laughs> so much you need humor for this rather um, dark uh, module, like with yeah. um, C Elysium. <laughs> anyway, let's 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 yeah, go. And... Yeah. Uh, passing by one of the up, uh, one of the residents brought you to, to the uh, toward you toward the mountain trail. Um, and they and, and one of them told you that the path there to the observatory mm -hmm. is well trodden mm -hmm. by the, by the researchers with clear wooden sides that mark the ascent as you go up. As you as you ascend uh, up the mountain, things start to uh, start to start, start to get a little cold. I would like you to each of you to roll a Constitution saving throw. Cost, uh, a Constitution check. Can uh, can anyone hear me? Yep. I have my dice aside. Roll on the ground. So I'll be just a second. Right. So Constitution check or saving throw? I didn't say yeah. Constitution saving throw. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, just need to check something. Okay, no, and it does. I think it was with encouragement, so never mind. Ooh. Uh oh. And that 20, that roll. <laughs> 12 plus 2, so 14. Alright. I rolled a 7 plus 6, so 13. You're able to uh, fight, through, uh, fight through the cold, and as you uh, walk up, you see two uh, people just like hunching over a what appears to be some sort of corpse of a, car a carcass of. You take a little closer look. I would like each of you oh. to. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Um, if anyone is within ten feet of me, they get plus. They get an extra four on their saving throws because they're within my aura of protection. Oh, nice. Which just, uh... came, which just came into effect. Um, I mean, I know. 
You take a closer, uh, closer look. Just wondering, do you do you approach these two people just like touching over what appears to be a carcass of some sort? Uh, uh, investigation check to uh, check on the corpse. Well, there's two people kind of punched over it at the moment. So I mean, you can certainly address you can certainly address them, but I'm I would I would beeline right for the body. I would like you to roll a yeah. Go ahead and roll a and uh, a perception check. All right. I rolled twenty four um, and twenty two. Of course, it's half feet in. And as you uh, get closer, one of the heads, uh, one of the uh, one of the two people's heads, rise up, and you see antlers on their heads. With what appears to be a mask or a skull, it turns around slowly and uh, and uh, roars, uh, roars at you. And yeah, I didn't think they would be. Well, friendly. that's very rude. Yeah, I didn't think they would be friendly creatures. Uh, I'm starting with this corpse. Yeah, I would like uh, I would like each of you to roll an init uh, like roll like uh, each of you an initiative check. So, be, so give me a second while I get out the music. Get out of the music. Get out of the music. It's the same not level seven because you guys would have an extra, uh, extra four to your initiative. Oh, that would be 16, nice. Sixteen plus five, so twenty-one. And yes, I got some truly horror uh, in music. So I got eighteen plus. I got eighteen plus two, so twenty. Uh, King plus two is twenty. Okay, so twenty-one for uh, Lon my... on Lonnie. Okay, so okay. Refresh my wait a minute. Refresh my memory. What is initiative based on? Is it like a d twenty plus dexterity? That's pl initiative plus oh yeah, d twenty plus dexterity. Did you forget? Um, d twenty. No. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so your dexterity modifier is also your initiative modifier. I was gonna say because unless you have something else that it uses it. Okay. Uh, okay. Unless you have any, any extra benefit. Like Lonnie uses her. <laughs> yeah. Or. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I was thinking because my initiative modifier is plus three, and I was thinking, oh, wait a minute, shouldn't that be higher? I guess. Well, I guess not. I've been wrong before. All is well. Good. Okay. And I rolled 12, so I got a 15 on that initiative check. Okay. However, um, as, uh, as they were at you, uh, you what are each of your armor class again? Uh, I have... S Does a uh, 24 hit you, Celeste? Ow! Yes, it does. I couldn't get out of yeah. Whatever hit me, I couldn't get out of the way in time. Alrighty, for eight points of damage, as you as you find a, sh as you find something sharp, just like biting down on your um, on, on your shoulder for eight point, uh, biting down on your shoulder for eight points of damage. You yell up and you turn around to see uh, more of these things behind you. Four more of these things. Fascinating. And it starts to claw. Uh, it starts to. Uh, uh, it's going to uh, make another attack on you with advantage. Does a does a twenty one hit? Unfortunately, it does. And you take uh, seven points of damage. Uh, I'm down to 35 hit points. Yes, yeah, so as, as, as it tries, as it bites on you, it claws, it claws at you. All right, you are okay. you, uh, you are, uh, you, uh, you, okay, Celeste, Lonnie, and Ark, you are considered uh, surprised. Yes, I'm very surprised. Alrighty, and they will, uh, four of them will pile on you. So, one, two, three. And they will attack each, uh, and the fourth, uh, fourth them will attack each of, each of you. Um, one of them will attack you, uh, Auric. 
tries to tries to claw at you, but misses. Uh, as you turn around and uh, uh, <laughs> it has to scratch, scratch off your uh, uh, scratch on your armor to no effect. It tries to bite on you. Does a fifteen hit? Nope. Alrighty. Um. So it, it tries to bite down on you, but you step back. Um. A third one will try to hit uh, to uh, go at you, Lonnie. Oof. But uh, it tries to bite on you, Lonnie. But you uh, duck down. Uh, but you like just like side step. Um. Uh, at the right moment, that was a little bit. But um. It tries to attack you with his claw. Does a 24 hit? Yes, of course that's gonna hit. And swipes at you for uh, 11 points of damage, uh, leaving behind uh, a bloody scratch. And you, and, you, and you recognize that, that these might be these strange creatures uh, the townsfolk has been talking about. No! Really? <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to attack um, Orc again. One, a fourth one is going to attack Orc and uh, misses with its bite. Going to attack again with its uh, with its claw. Does a twenty one hit? It does. And it does uh, seven points of damage as it swipes at your uh, body, and it piercing through your uh, your um, armor for uh, yeah seven points of damage. F uh, putting you at uh, fifty six hit points, I think. Yep. Alrighty. Lonnie, it's now your turn. Alright. Okay. Uh, due to a lack of real uh, visibility, what's the actual arrangement to where the creatures are clustered? Are they, are they like, uh, flanking each person? Are they all directed uh, to the side? Flanking, yeah, four of them are flanking you, and they're, they're like, two, uh, like about, like, say, 35 feet across from you. Um, where, where, uh, they're eating a, some sort of carcass. Okay, uh, the idea is if they are, uh, are they, are a majority of them on one side, and then... Uh, yeah, majority, uh, majority on one side, behind you, about 25 feet wide of a pathway. Okay, then I am going to do a air burst with, fi with fireball to angle it where the ones on that one side are go uh, going to be hit, hit by it. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, one behind you, or one one uh, by the carcass. Uh, the the whichever is the greater cluster, since the ones near me and Aura. All right, and Celeste. All right, so yeah. Okay, Scor scorching ray. Uh, no, this is going to be a air burst for fireball. That way, I can get the uh, get the ones on one side without without touching us. Basically, put them at the edge of the fireball. Okay, so. Does it, do I need well for dex, uh, dex safe? Uh, you will, but I'm also going to use um, spell secrets to alter its damage to radiant, and then I'm going to burn off one one level one spell with my new alchemical spell casting <laughs> to add two d10 force damage to it. Oh shit! So it, they, so they need to do a re, they need, the uh, creatures on that side need to do a reflex save. So dexterity save. Yep. Um, are you hitting all four of them? Yes. Okay, does the nine make it? It does not, so they will be taking... That, that's for one of them. Okay, nine doesn't make it. Uh, does the 17 make it? Uh, a 17 will, a 17 will reduce the damage, yeah. Yeah, six, okay, eight, 16, uh, 30, 20. Does the 30, 20 make it? Uh, yes. And does Basically, it, anything, anything above, anything above a sixteen. Um, a nine doesn't make it. So, okay. Okay. Uh, the da then the total damage will be for the ones that do not save. They will take 37, 37 radiant, da thirty-seven uh, radiant force damage, and the rest will take half that. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Uh, with the burst of your radiant uh, blast, they were sent off the uh, uh the cliffside. And they fall down, screaming. Good. Now we have some room to breathe. A shame. I want to get a closer look at their antlers. Okay, uh... 
then I'm with uh, a little bit of breathing room. I'm going to get cl closer to Orok, and uh, that'll be my turn. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, how much? So, thirty-seven points of damage to five by two, which will round down to eighteen. Yeah. Okay. As for, as for the rest, they uh, they get knocked back. Their skull seems a little crushed, and one of their at atlas uh, is snapped off. All right, it's your turn. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a magic weapon on my on my uh, great sword. Okay. Uh, so that basically turns it into a plus one uh, plus one weapon. Okay. So now. Uh, bringing out my great sword, I'm gonna start hacking my way. Uh, any of them look particularly hurt? Yeah, uh, the two that uh, that uh, Lonnie has, has uh, the two that Lonnie has hurt, they look like they're about to be out of it. Okay, I'm going to attack them then. Okay, so uh, make your attack roll. Oof. Okay, first attack is a 16 plus 8, so 24. That hits. Alright, I was AFK for a bit. What did I miss? You got, you got, you got bit for total, uh, oh. Well, you, uh, yeah, I, 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 no, I missed that. No, I got that part. Lonnie uh, managed to knock off two of these things off the, off a cliffside and, and hurt, uh, and heavily damaged two, uh, two more oh, of them. Wee. Okay, so the first one I hit for 15 points of damage. You basically, basically uh, uh, knock it down and cut it in half. Okay, and then I move over to the other one and swing my sword again. Okay, make your attack roll. Uh, does a 15 hit it? That, uh, that's a hit. Okay, I rolled a 6 and a 2, but I'm going to re-roll the 2 because of my great weapon fighting. Um, hang on, just need to check something. Quick. Okay, annoyingly, it rolled. It turned into a one. <laughs> so that you you still to you still manage you still manage you you kill it. Mean you see six and a one. Yeah. Okay, so six and one plus five, so yeah. Yeah, so it, so you kill okay. it, uh, and it beat the same fate from your uh, weapon, and so it is, it is called Patriot. Okay. Would that be your turn? That would be my turn, yes. One of these things is going to try to induce the hunger on you, and it looks towards you, um, Orak. I would like you, okay. uh, and if someone is able to make a course which appears to be some sort of ice method, and it seems to beckon towards you, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, wisdom saving throw. That would be a 22. You recognize that it, that it wants, uh, that... This thing wants to eat that corpse, and you, and you manage to shake a water of what it's trying to do on you. Yeah. Okay. And it, and it will just like it will just like uh, uh uh like uh march menacingly towards you, and ends its turn. Like uh right, like meets right halfway towards you. No, I, it's just gonna say where it is. And. The other one's going to try the same thing, but to um, Celeste. Celeste, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Is oh. Celeste is less is Celeste within uh, ten feet of me? Yes. Okay, you get an extra four on your saving throw. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, cool, cool. That's a yeah, wisdom. And wisdom saving throw, and I get yeah, I got a plus four modifier on that anyway, so that's going to be a plus eight on a roll of fourteen. So does a twenty-two do anything? 
Yes. Same as mine. It, uh, uh, the corpse beckons to you, uh, Celeste, and you recognize that, no, you don't want to eat that corpse. Yeah, yeah you're not food. <laughs> uh, both you and Auric are now, uh, are now immune to this, um, uh, to what are effects it's trying to do on you for quite a while. About a day or so. Yeah, let's just complete the adventure within a day, we'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, what are, what are your pe passive perception rolls? Uh, uh, my passive, passive perception is fourteen. Fifteen for mine. You see another one of the of these assholes like uh to come hopping down, uh do a three uh three point landing and then stands up. <laughs> and the other one's like, just like staring like, dude, discretion. And the other one shrugs. Another one, uh, other one lands and like stumbles a little bit, stands up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So more of these assholes have, uh, have come to join. So um, so more of these uh more uh, more, yeah. So more of these not uh more of these things uh that just just like pop up. We are the Mordillo. It mutters. And it rushes, uh, rushes towards you and attacks um, Celeste. Oh dear. For... Yeah, it does a 22 hit. Yeah, anything above a 17. My armor class is 17. Alrighty then. So it's going to bite you down for 16... Uh, for... For... Out! Six... Uh, six... Uh... Nine points of damage. And oh boy, am I hurting. Okay, I'm and that's a 19. Hit. So that's 26. That's a tw that's yes, a yes, it does. Oh, I am, I am just taking L's today. Yeah, it rushes towards you and uh, bites down and grabs you. I would like you to make either an acrobatics check or an athletics check to escape from its grasp. Okay. Okay, that's going to be uh, Dex. Okay, that's gonna be a dexterity. Okay, that's gonna be a dexterity. I got a plus three on that, so. Um. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm gonna add two d four. Yeah, I'm gonna add two d four to that roll because I'm favored. I'm a divine soul sorcerer. I'm favored by the gods. Go ahead. Okay, then I'm adding a five to the five to a roll of ten. That's fifteen. So does an eighteen help me out any, any? Yes, it does. It tries to it tries to uh to follow your uh, like to follow more of your flesh, but you push away at the at the last moment. <laughs> the gods were smiling on me that time. Technically, the the, the excesses of gods were, are ambiguous, so. Your bloodline, uh, your bloodline is tied to your, uh, to, tied to a planet six. Uh, 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 yeah, m yeah, m yeah. My angelic ancestor was looking out for me. Also, happens to be the otherworldly patron of Celeste's ex-girlfriend Meredith. Long story. Got it. So, uh, another one will try to. Oh, will try to. Uh, okay, uh, that will be its turn. And we'll try to another one will, will rush towards you, um, Lonnie, and tax. That's a seventeen hit. Uh, yep. For nine points of damage, at a close at you, uh, at close you of uh, turning uh, more of your flesh apart, and attacks you again with his uh, with his bite. You look inside and it appears, uh, yeah, that's a twenty-one uh, hit. If a twenty hit, uh, if a seventeen hit, a twenty would hit. So, yeah, for yeah. fifteen points of damage. And as you look in uh, past his speak, it doesn't look like there's like, it looks like there's there's flesh, but it looks like it's been flayed inside inside past the uh, skull as it bites down on you. I would like you to make a uh, either an acrobatics check or athletics check to escape its grasp. Okie doke. Uh, 
I'm going to be using athletics since I actually have training in it. So that is a 19 plus 3, so 22. <laughs> despite your small frame, um, despite your small frame, it tries to grab into you to to try to eat you, but um, you slip away and push it at the at the last moment. Just like uh, Celeste. It grows, it grows out of you as it hunches down. <sighs> Annunciate, I can't understand you. You hear a creepy, dark chuckle that seems to come from the, from the corpse. <laughs> uh, Celeste and Ark, you hear that as well. Okay, that was unnerving. Alrighty, so Lonnie, now it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do as a bonus action real quick to chuck a potion. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I only get to be back 7 HP, which isn't great, given that means I only have 11 left. Oh. Okay. You had 40 hit points, so... Okay. Right. Okay, uh, I'm going to use my third level spells and cast Fly on myself, and then I'm going to head straight the fuck up, and, uh, yeah. Lonnie has had quite enough of being engaged in melee. <laughs> I, I, I don't fuck this shit so, about. So, so, yeah. so I'm now 60 feet in the air. Yeah, you like fuck this shit about, and you fly up. And that will be my turn. <laughs> okay, Auric, you're up. Do these things look like fiends or aberrations to me? Uh, let me check. No. No. Hmm, okay. What about elementals or fey? No. I would like you actually okay. to roll a nature check. If you can. Uh, well, I got an 18 and plus 1, so that makes 19. You've heard stories, uh, something called the Mord uh, Mord uh, Mordio. Um, those who find themselves lost in wild self uh, in the wilds of ancient forest, such as the Silver Wood, should uh, not only fear uh, what may consume them, but what may might consume uh, themselves consume. A material was once yeah. a mortal that has feasted upon the flesh of a creature of of their own race, and they've been transformed from uh, for uh, for this kind of holistic act. Uh, and, uh... Surely then they would be demonic, then, right? No. They appear to be no. more as monstrosities. These, uh, these, be, uh, these appear to be, uh, fresh mordillos. They, they seem to oh. be guided by some, some sort of queen. Okay, well, that cancels that plan out there. Um... Alright. In which case, I am going to. Let's see. What bonus? Right, any other bonus actions I can do a concentration, which I can't use with my with my with my magic weapon up. So I am going to. Uh oh. oh. Someone's having a call. Having a call. Um. Oh shit! Yeah, right, Celeste! Uh, Celeste! Actually, Celeste! Actually, Celeste! It's your turn. I completely forgot about your turn. Well, since it's Celeste... Yeah, you, did, you did, but I had to turn my mic off because the phone started ringing. So, want me to skip your turn? Uh, no... <clears throat> yes. Uh, no, how... How how many how many of these fuckers are, have piled on... Piled on me because they... Because they suddenly decided the angel was a chew toy. <laughs> Uh, I think about one of them, um, and, uh, they're on you, and Orak. Lonnie seems to be just like, uh, funny, I'm saying, fuck this shit about. Yeah, because if any of them, because if, because however many are in a 15 foot cone, uh, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get a little bit, yeah, they're gonna get a little bit of mama's lightning breath. I'm casting dragon's breath. Yeah, I'm sorry, I completely forgot about you. Alrighty, so um, why do you need to roll for lightning uh, for dragon's breath? Okay, yeah, well, for yeah, I cast, I gotta cast it, gotta cut, 
touch someone, which obviously I'm touching myself, so. All right, so I'm going to roll a dexterity check for how many you're going to be attacking? Uh, how, uh, however, however many will fit in a 15-foot cone. So two of them. So one of them rolled a 19. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and the other, yeah, uh, they're going to they're gonna be making a uh, dex. Yeah, they have to make a dex save or or take uh, 3d6 lightning damage or half that on a success. Uh, one of them succeeded, the other didn't. Alright, let's see. Uh, let's see. Now let's see. 3d6. Yeah, I fig yeah, I figured cold would I figured the Celeste's usual cold wouldn't do wouldn't do squat against these monsters, so I went with lightning. Alright, let's and that's let's see, five, three, and two and two, that's uh ten points of damage. So that's yeah, five for one and ten for the other. Alrighty, uh, you channel your lightning for your breath, and it strikes two of these more more deals on uh, 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 on him. They seem to be uh, quite taken back by the by the shock, but they uh, but they uh, uh, shake it off. Obviously hurt, going by the scorch by the uh, lightning. Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm maintaining. Yeah, and I'm maintaining concentration spell on the, on this, so it's. Yeah, concentration for up to yeah, the spell lasts, you know, with concentration for up to a minute. So, yeah, next turn they're getting another blast. All right, all right. Now it's your turn. I'm terribly sorry about this. I got a little carried away with these uh, more deals. I'm really I'm uh, pumped to try them out. All right then. Okay. Well, since they're not demonic, I guess the best thing I can do is uh, go around attacking them then. Alrighty, um, I yeah, they're like mini Wendigos. Sit the angel. Alrighty, are you going to be attacking the ones that attacked you and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, attack well, got... oh. Yeah, I mean the one that's attacking me, I'm obviously going to go for. Alrighty, so. make your um, okay, make your attack. All right, that's a 17 plus eight, so 25. That's a hit. And I'm going to use one of my, uh, I'm going to use one of my level one divine smites. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, so the physical damage. Physical damage. Ooh, that's a. Physical damage is a 5 plus 6 plus 5, so 16. Ooh. And the radiant damage. And since you didn't say they were. And since you said they're not fey or undead. Or are they undead? No. They defeat monstrosities. Okay. Just plain old monstrosities. All right, then. monstrosity. So, would that would have that been monstrous humanoid in third edition? Sometimes, or it would have been an aberration. Depends on the creature. No, aberrations are still in. Yeah, but well, aberrations okay. are still in five. They are, but they no monstro. Go ahead. Anyway, uh, I rolled a uh, 13 um, radiant damage, so in total that is 29 points of damage. You cut them down with with your uh, shining weapon, what are you attacking with, a greatsword? A uh, greatsword with the, uh, well, it's silvered as well, yeah, so um, but it's also... It's also got a magical element to it now because I've cast a magic weapon. You on you, it, hold, so. uh, you twirl around and you cut one of the uh, mortillos in half by the waist. It okay. screams and it screams as his, as two parts of his body just like flops to the ground, dead. Okay, I spin my sword around and then I hack down on the other one. Right, making an, another another attack roll. Uh, thirteen plus eight, so twenty-one. That's a hit. And I'm not going to use my divine smite on this one, so <laughs> two ones. Good thing I can re-roll those. <laughs> yeah. Never thought that fighting style would be useful. Great weapon fighting is fantastic for great uh, when you're wielding a great sword. Um, that is two plus five plus five, so twelve. That's it enough to uh, to take it uh, to take it down. I see. I see like oh. I see like a hack a hack into pieces and pieces and pieces just to make sure it's dead. All right. Would that be your turn? That would pretty much be my turn. Yes. Yeah. One of the more deals. Um. 
makes up a strange gesture and the corpse also move, gesturing to you, um, Lonnie. Make a, uh, wisdom saving throw. Uh, is it a magical effect? I, I need say. to know, but... It doesn't uh, say. Is it probably a magical effect because it affects my save? Yeah. It is a certain type of effect that is beyond this world, so to make it a little a little creepy, I'm gonna say no. Alright, in that case that is a let's see where to go with this. Uh thirteen plus six, so nineteen. You managed to resist whatever is trying, uh, what, uh, the, comp the compel to eat this mm, ice method, whatever, or for whatever reason. It looks very appetizing, but I'm not in the mood right now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and that ends his turn. Um, one of the Mordillos, uh, uh, launches for it and attacks, uh, you, um, Orak. Does a 19 hit? That does hit. For 10 points of damage, as like a claw through, uh, through, 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 uh, through, uh, through your armor. Ow. And tries to take a bite out of you. There's flesh underneath their skull appears to be rotten, as it tries to bite down on you and misses. And that ends his turn. No, that ends his turn. Uh, Celeste? Oh, good. Oh, goody. I, uh, it I AFK'd for a bit and came back just just in time. Uh, just in time. Uh, are the yeah? Are these uh? Yeah. Are, yeah. Are these two uh, Mordios? Uh, yeah. That I uh, bl yeah. That I blew a thunderbolt kiss to. Still kicking. Nope. Or I finished off. Okay. Are there any anything else in a fifteen foot cold that uh, no. needs a little? Uh, um. Only the only one of them that goes after uh Orac. So go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, and I'm and I'm gonna burn. In that well, in that case, if uh, Orok is in the uh, Orok is inside the cone, I'm gonna burn a sorcery point to make him succeed his dexterity save with careful spell. Nice. So mwah! <laughs> another. <laughs> Another, yeah, another thunder, another blowing of a thunderbolt ki kiss at this, uh, at this Mordio. Yeah, he's gonna make, need to make a deck save. That's a 14, make it? Uh, 14 does not. Okay. Make your damage. So he's taking 3d6, so that, he's taking 3d6 lightning damage. Five. Five, four, that's 14 points of damage all day. Okay. Um, okay, uh, it seems to like, uh, uh, twitch, uh, twitch, I see you a shark and kiss. It traces like the strange howling grunt. Yeah, but it's still standing, though, barely. Is that is will that end your turn? Yeah, that'll yeah that'll end my turn since you know still maintaining maintaining concentration on this spell. I got four more rounds to use it in case in case some other bastard decides that the angel is a freaking chew toy or t oh, or a holy snack. Yeah, that too. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, she is a snack, but she is also a. Yeah, she she wants to be. The, yeah, normally Celeste is the other kind of snack. Yeah. So, Lonnie, you're up. All right. Uh, being that I'm relatively safe in the air, I'm going to use my bonus action to take advantage of the investigator feat and do a search. Uh, do the search action as a bonus action. Okay. Uh, to both uh, to essentially look around and make sure nothing else is coming, and to uh, take a bit of examination of the freaking corpse. It's wiggling its finger and cackling to see, see if I can get any info about it. Alrighty, uh, go ahead. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Alright, so that's 17 plus 8. Ah, 
you do see some figures up in the distance, but they're too f like up in the distance, somewhere close to the forest. But they don't. Uh, they uh, they probably seem to notice you, but they don't seem to take any uh, reaction. As for the corpse, like I said, it's an ice method. It is. It appears to be dead as it, as, as as it can be. No life signs. Nothing. All right, and there is one active Mordio still act, uh, around. Two. Two. Okay. Uh, whichever one is lower health, I'm going to toss a firebolt at it. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, guys, how how do you like how you liking this so far? You mean other? You mean other, other than the fact that the Mordios think I'm a literal snack? Yes. I mean, at least you weren't down to five HP for a bit. Uh, anyways, that's a 24 to hit. That hits. That definitely hits. And that's yeah, it. We do currently lack nice. a bit of healing, too. Uh, yeah, when, when this is I over, I'll down and get some healing. Uh, it's a good thing it's less, it's a, it's a defined soul sorcerer. Uh, yeah, and, 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 a and a protector Asimov. And a protector Asimar at six levels, so she gets, you know, six points of healing with healing hands. Yeah. Uh, 17 fire damage. Alrighty, uh, you managed to, like, burn him down as it greens into a, uh, into a heap of ash and burnt flesh. All of that remains its, its skull. And the antlers. Stylish. Yes, stylish. Okay, uh, that, that will be my turn. Alrighty, Orak, you're up. You see, oh, you see one more deal left. What do you do? One more. I'm going to attack him. Alrighty. This is my point. Alright, ma make your attack. Go ahead, you charge okay. and attack. Okay, uh, first attack is 22. That's a hit. Uh, that's a 5 and a 1, gonna reroll the 1. Turns that into a six, so that is uh, sixteen points of damage. Uh, you lopped off. Uh, you lopped off part of its uh, part of its arm. It, uh, it looks at it and it glares at you. Do it. Um, it just silently glares at you. Okay, just gonna attack again then. Okay, go ahead. That's an. Uh... Oh, hang on. That's uh. Oh, okay, uh, that is a 18. That hits. Does 18 hit? That's, that's, like I said, that's a hit. Okay, uh, I didn't get, I didn't hear you then. Oh, sorry, I might spin the mic. And that's two sixes plus five, so 17 points of damage. Yeah, um, it just, like, uh, uh, it finally glares at you before you, uh, lop his head off. And the rest of his spike just, like, falls down. The head just, like, rolling nearby. And that ends the combat. Congratulations, everybody. So, you're back on the trail. Um, be sure to play the, the other, the previous music. You're bloodied, you're bitten, and as far as you know, you're not infected. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Lonnie's gonna <laughs> chug another health potion real quick. Okay, it's good that you carry plenty of healing potions, eh? And I'm gonna be back up to 32, because I'm burning my healing hands on myself. Alright, Yolandi, how much have you healed? I'm back up to 18 HP. Nice. Wow, that was a hard... That's less than half. I mean, in one turn, you you took me down to 5 HP, so I took a lot of, took a lot of damage at once. Damn. Still, how was the encounter? I hope I hope it was. Not. Yeah. Yeah. The the. Right. Sorry, you were saying um something, Celeste. Uh, yeah. The encounter. The encounter. The encounter was good. It was exciting. Yeah. So I you. Got, so all I got chewed to pieces, but I'll live. <laughs> so oh, you now oh, and how are these? Oh, the bodies of these things, and what appears to have eaten corpse, uh, or, should I say, corpses, of the ice methods. Alright, uh, 
Lion's going to go ahead and pick up a few of the antlers and shove them, uh, shove them in her pack, just because I, I think they're pretty stylish, and I will probably use them later. And if nothing else, they're evidence for, uh, to sh show what's been going on later uh, to in authorities. Alrighty. Um, yeah, always, always good to bring them the heads of the critters, uh, the head not of the, the head, critter, not, the not the head, just the, just the horns or the an the antler. Yeah, just the horns in this case. But, you know, trophy, you know, trophies, whatever, whatever you can lop off and yeah. bring and bring back with you. Orak, um, what deal is spoken in a language not of this world? Uh, you've been hearing tales of it in recent years. They are not of this world. By the way, this is just me in addition to what have you already uh, to what have you already known. It appears okay. that this queen has uh, as a is a newcomer. Has taken her uh, has taken her place somewhere in uh, or perhaps a few. But there are only just rumors. Tales. This is as uh, as far as you know. Do you disclose this information to the rest of the uh, to the rest of the group because of your uh, of your good role? I do. How, how does the rest of you react? So this is a oh, cr Celeste rubs the bridge of her nose, remembering the time she. Remembering, remembering the time she watched Aliens with her with the uh, with her friend the Wizard of Snark, and says, "Oh, great! So this is going to be a bug hunt." However, um, you do have your task at hand. Yeah, uh, we'll proceed. Uh, yeah. Although I will uh, ask, uh, she's referring to the fact that. She's referring to the fact that, you know, Mordios have a queen. You know, there's lots of these things, and one of them is bigger. Yeah. Or perhaps... Uh, not Orok, do you happen to have any uh, extra healing? Because I am... I, I, I could use maybe a little bit. Um, how how badly damaged are you guys? Uh, I'm at half... I'm at a little less than half HP. Okay, and Celeste? Uh, Celeste is at currently at thirty-two, down from fifty. Alternatively, we could we could take okay, a short Okay, I will use die. I will use ten of my lay on hands uh, pool on each of you, and then we Much can and then, All right. And, All right. and then we can take a short rest if we want to get the rest back. Go ahead and take a short a, a short rest. And oh yeah, Yulani, I believe you're at twenty-eight. Yeah, that'll that'll get me, yeah that'll yeah that'll get me my spells back. And Celeste, I believe you're back at forty-two. Yep, forty-two. The answer to the ultimate question of life, <laughs> the universe, and, and everything. everything. Alrighty, so go ahead and make um and spend a healing die to make a uh, to make a uh, short rest or as many as you, as you want. Yeah, I got um, eleven HP, so I'm on I'm back down to only being let's see down to being only one HP down. That's that that's fine. I, I can deal with that. I can deal with thirty nine. And that gets me a third level spell slot back, so yay. Alrighty, Celeste Orak. I uh yeah, I rolled a five on a D eight, so that's how much I'm healing. I'm back up to forty seven. Orak? Uh, almost at full hit point. So I that's good rolled, enough for me. I rolled two dice. I rolled. I got two sevens, so plus the uh, other four, um, so that's eighteen points. So you're back at full hit points. Yep. All right. Oh, in reference, I used three hit die. <sighs> I used two. I yeah. used two. Okay, so you ban you you banish up uh, the, uh, the wounds to the best of your abilities. You wait uh, intense. As you kind of uh, like dread for any any of the infections from these fights and nothing, you sigh relieved. Cool. Uh, for the record, because of the short rest, my um, magic weapon spell dissolves. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously I'm no longer flying. Okay. And I can, and I can, and I can no longer, and I can no longer breathe fire or ice or lightning or whatever I choose. 
Alrighty. Um. Would you, uh, so, um, Lonnie, Celeste, and Orc, would you like to roll either an Arcana or History check if you want to know more about the Observatory? Uh, yeah, um, I'll yeah, I can... Sure, go. Uh, I'm gonna roll Arcana. 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 Yeah. And Lonnie, what... Arcana, what, what, Arcana. Arcana. You say tomato, I say tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Sure. I rolled, uh, okay, 17 I rolled on my 16. History check. Lonnie? I rolled lower, but ended up also getting a, se a 17 to the total. <laughs> this up to... Uh, this up yeah, and I got I got sixteen on that arcana check. Alrighty, uh, Star Peak. Uh, give me a second. It is uh, it is uh, the observatory was built by Keen Darren Year where nine and five uh twelve uh Year of the Kingdom or YK for short. Though he died before, shortly uh, you know, though he died before construction was, was finished. Its purpose before all of the strange things are happening is to chart the moons and stars in hopes of providing science and portents for the future. The Arcane Congress uh, now uses the site to study the moons and stars and a... Uh, moons and stars. And, uh, and, those, and the wizard that, that goes by the name Lara Hut is the keeper of the place. So... Um... Uh, it appears that the uh, that the uh, uh, that the path seems to be a little steeper than than you th than it looks. I would like each of you to roll a str uh, a strength athletics check if you can. All right. Yeah, I'm not trained in athletics, but I do have a plus three dexterity. I said strength athletics. Oh strength! Oh strength! Oh, I have a. Okay, 16 plus 3, so 19. Alright. Athletic check, so you say? Yes, athletic strength. Okay. Uh, that um, is a 14 I will, plus Yeah, I, I have a... I have a z uh, 14 plus what? 14 plus 7, so 21. Yeah, you're able to keep your footing... Oh, uh, your, your, you're able to keep your footing and a little bit of climbing. You were able to... Um, and a few shortcuts here and there. You were able to reach the top of the observatory. So give me a second while I switch the music. I really like the atmosphere of the music. I chose really well. I'm just saying. The Star Peak uh, Observatory <clears throat> now. No, uh, uh, let me start over. The Star Peaks uh, Observatory stands a single looming building against a snow capped summit. Lucius deep black architecture accents the or ornamented shimmering gold details, as if the building itself is, is a stunning star, uh, starscape. The dome reflects the, sunny, the setting sun in shades of blazing reds and oranges, and from the way the surface, the surface catches the drifting clouds, you know that the stars must alight across the surface at night. The well-worn path coaxes you toward a blessedly warm building, where large arc doorways with crescent golden hands await you. Uh, oh boy. Does anyone get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's very comforting. This is great architecture. Lonnie will make a house like it one day. I just want to make sure because I have a tendency to not enunciate, so just want to make sure. Alrighty. Um, so you push the door. What do you do? A knock. I mean, gotta be polite, right? Yeah. The door opens, and you see a black-haired woman uh, in her early 20s. She's medium height and lithe, though she appears to be a little... Uh, she holds herself smaller than she appears, and she has a bit of sheepish... Um, uh, sheepish sense about her, just like... It's looking... Uh, just like... I mean, her hands together in a nervous tick. Her... Her... Her, uh, her clothes speak... As, yeah, if you use noisy to speak a little subtly to nobility. <sighs> My lead, lead to see you. She looks at the two of you. It, wasn't there supposed to be a force? She, she asked a little worryingly. 
yeah, I'm sure they're somewhere, probably hanging out in the distance. They'll make, they'll make their way eventually, but for now, it's just us three. Okay. Uh, she nods nervously. I'm... <sighs> I'm, gl I'm glad you, you answered my letter. I see you're aware of what's going on. Sure, I, if, if you could explain the Bog and Ben Wendigo we had to deal with, that'd be great. They're like, hey, eat this corpse. The, wi like, uh, the Wendigo? Great. So it's true? Yeah, she looks at uh, at the bandages. You said Wendigo. What do you, what do you mean by Wendigos? Well, it's clearly not what they were going, uh, what they called themselves, but in the Trust, we have all these stories of if you spend too much time in the mountains, you go crazy and start eating each other, and you'll turn into a monster. And it's with hours, I, and I, I, I do know what a, what a Wendigo is, but uh, if I think they hear howling and I hear rumors of horned people. Yeah, I can't confirm if these are the same thing. They call themselves something different, but it, it's what I'm thinking they are. So that's where we are. Okay, well. Things have gotten a little strange. Um, she snaps her lips together. Um, Emphasizes that female orc ha have arrived, cl uh, claiming that she can help us uh, build this uh, telescope inside. Orc, it sounds like you're up. Is she, is she here? Is she still here? Uh, I, b I believe so. Um, but though she sleeps within the uh, uh, observatory, uh, she sleep she sleeps inside the observatory and. Uh, Lock herself in. I don't know what she is doing, but she's causing all sorts of strange things and making uh, my fellow researchers here um, strange. Do you not trust strange? her. Strange, like they seem to speak very <clears throat> highly of her. some of these things. Seem to speak very highly of her if they're not desperate for it for an answer. I know it throws. She stops herself. It, it, it was his desperate for something, as she as she says. And uh, she, he appears he appears to be uh, well, with the most clear headed next to me. As for the others, well, that Dragmar Arcock is really tense, and he seems to he seems to be really interested in that in that. In that orc, she uh, she uh, she tells um, orc, and she looks towards Yulani. Um, you finally have spoken highly of you. I hope you can help me out here. That's the hope. But uh, given we have we have someone hold up, causing shit, and no one's just barging in to find out what it is. I guess it's down to us. Obviously. Well. Obviously. Yeah, try, try. Uh, you should get inside. It's quite cold outside. What's the rest of you? Oh, so what do you say? Celeste, yes, yeah, Celeste walks in, but giggles and says, "The cold never, never bothered me anyway." Hey, well, let's not go there. Let's let those jokes go. <laughs> Uh, of course, he went frozen. I should have seen it coming. Of so he went inside and it's a huge uh, circular room, much more messy and ha has than the research has any right to be. And the middle of the room is a, is a vast orrery of the universe, which showcases the sun, the planet, and ev and everyone's twelve moons in gleaming glass prisons. More significant, oh, oh. as you as you have noted. It's a massive telescope that seems crammed into the space, and that seems to bleed into every work area around it. Many of the, um, are made of it's made of many facets of metal and glass, and it is the most largest thing in the room. Everything else seems to accommodate, not the other way around. And you, a lot of from uh, from Ilda, you also see several other people there, just. Doing whatever, just doing their work with the, with the dragon or just like um, just like um, writing it down on a chalk oh, chalkboard. Um, uh, a dark-haired, uh, dark, uh, dark-skinned elf with uh, with um, long dreads, just 
Oh, uh, like flipping, flipping, flipping through, through the book. His bright brown eyes, um, just like zipping left and right uh, as he reads the lines. You see, also see a uh, a, a, a muscular female dwarf, just look, uh, just like uh, looking over at the uh, telescope, obviously making sure it works. Uh, she has a wavy of uh, dark, rudy hair. And you also see a uh, teeth, a teeth, teeth thing also reading, uh, reading a book, though a little more diligently and more slowly. He has a rich blue skin, and has a, a long sheet of purple hair, but thin, uh, thin horns that circle around his head. And um, yeah, a, as for the dragonborn, a copper, uh, his skin, uh, his scales are co copper with thick clothes, and has an eye for equations as you can see. With uh, with uh, uh, spiny jaws and uh, 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 spines around his jaw and uh, down his back. You also see another uh, just like uh, a female elf, pale blonde hair, same color as his golden skin, just observing the uh, telescope. Okay, uh, you two want to go uh, de deal with uh, talking to people, getting what information you can. Uh, Lonnie would like to just not beat around the bush and just e directly examine the telescope. Okay. Um, you pro you try to approach the uh, uh, you try to you try to approach the uh, the uh, uh, telescope, but the dwarf and the el uh, uh, the, but the female dwarf and elf uh, stop you in the tracks. You probably uh, you probably shouldn't interfere with our research, says the elf. And you probably shouldn't interfere with investigation of what the heck is going on when you have people getting getting attacked in, in the in the outside you should probably be a bit more cautious with who you decide to bar well everything is is fine here so you say but i can't help you i can't help but notice of all things you decide hey this tiny gnome going to look at a freaking telescope is just so scary Maybe you should go do something important rather than bar my path. Uh, roll a persuasion check. Well, I ain't gonna persuade anyone. That's that. That's a seven. That's fine. Uh, sorry, we. Uh, sorry, we can't allow you to get to the uh, with this t telescope. And as the meanwhile, um, uh, the drug this uh, this brass dragon board approaches the uh. Approaches the uh, male dark skin elf and just like gl glares and kind of growls at him. Just well, I shouldn't say the dragon is walking by, but this elf is just walking by, and the uh, dragon is noticing him. Just gives us his dark glare, growls, goes back to his work. And we're back. Alrighty, uh, Celeste, Auric, what do you want to do? Yeah, y'all do your thing. I'm gonna be attempting to get to the telescope. Roll a stealth check, if you can. Me or them? You. Sure, I could do that. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> Celeste is a bit of a glamour puss. She, uh, she don't do stealth. Or she's basically, she's basically walking around in Giorno Giovanna cosplay. Yeah, I got that. Uh, 17. Alrighty, uh, you're able to sneak by, uh, while, uh, while the elf and the dwarf are just, are just stuck with their work. Um. Alrighty, so, uh, okay, so, um. Look to the telescope. Okay, I'm I trying I try to look for anything on the, on the telescope. So. I'm gonna read out loud what it says. In the middle of the room stands an orrery of the universe, crafted from gleaming golden metals and white bands around which lots prisons travel, catching the light and throwing it in uh, uh, glittering uh, patterns around the room. These prisons mirror both planets and moons, all gravitating around a splendid sun. And while uh, and while you are approaching the uh, telescope, telescope, you hear mountains of some of the most of the other researchers wondering about uh, wondering about the moons. And that then must be protected. 
Included. Um, a tiefling, uh, who goes by the name of um, Arve. <sighs> I've been oh, oh so uh, who who would like to talk to who? Uh, <clears throat> Celeste is gonna talk to the tiefling. Huh. You, you know because. You know, because of that lovely uh, angel-demon dichotomy. Hmm. He looks at you. You appear to be a little more heavenly than usual, he says. A nice, an awesome art, I assume? <laughs> got it. Got it in one, cutie. Well, well, what were you... Well, you're flirting to me, but I'm more interested in these uh, arcane secrets. You are I can see that. I can see that. What kind of arcane secrets are you trying to uncover? Whatever this lark has uh, has tempted me with, dark secrets to be like dangling, like a uh, like a cheese on a string right in front of me. He he says with a uh, <laughs> bit of a loopy smile. Yeah, slut. Yeah, Celeste cocks an eyebrow because she can tell she can tell this guy is um, he's a little out to lunch. All right, uh, all right. All right. So meanwhile, Arik, what are you doing? But, but yeah, but yeah, <clears throat> but yeah. She continues to you know just let him yeah you know, just you know bat her eyes at him and let him ramble. Yeah, she, he rambles on for a little bit, which seems uh, and you lose your interest quite quickly. Just. Pretending to show interest. Meanwhile, Orc, what are you doing? Orc? Hang on, can you hear me? Yeah, I can Yeah, hear we you. can now. Yeah. yeah, so Orc, you're inside the uh, observatory and you see that several of these researchers are a little out of it, to say the least. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my Divine Sense and check to see whether any of these are possessed uh, uh fiend well fiends undead or celestial uh, uh if there's any kind of element to them that is uh that proves they are not that shows they are not who they appear to be that ca oh in that case uh, oh in that case uh, probably a good idea for me to uh cast detect evil and good Alrighty, so um, you, you, so both of you mutter a few words. Um, roll a slider hand check, um, Celeste. All right, that's uh, let me see, sleight of hand. That's dexter. That's dexterity. Not a skill I'm trained in, but I still have a plus three modifier, sir. Ah, rolled a nineteen, so that's a uh, twenty-two all day. You mutter a few words, just. Uh, it's just like uh, you basically just like you just dismiss disguise your a your uh, movements of your hands as, as a dismissive yeah, my gesture. Son. The Tiffy seems a little hurt, but uh, but he uh, covers quickly and returns to his book. As for as for uh, yeah, you return to your reading, honey. Uh, the people uh, the people are definitely people here, but there's a sense of. There is something wrong with this place. There's a... Some sort of demonic, uh, devilish pl uh, place here, deep within. You couldn't uh, quite put your finger on it, but you know that there's something definitely yeah, wrong. Yeah, there's... There's some... Yeah, there, there, there's something here that ain't stirring the Kool-Aid, as it were. The tiefling, like, says and asks, What's the Kool-Aid? No, I was saying that out of character. Okay, okay. Remember, I, I t remember I try drink. to sound more feminine when I'm in character. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, for the record, the British person asks, "What's it? What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get that a lot less. Are you taking the piss, mate? Alrighty, so, Ark, uh, you also feel that there's something definitely wrong with this place. 
People here are, well, people. They're just... They seem a little like they're possessed. Mm. And you had a feeling that there's not much you can do about uh, about them right now, but... Other than that... But, uh, but unless, other than that, Ada seems, they're... Ilda seems to be the only one that isn't affected. Who, who's that? Ilda, the, uh, the young researcher who uh, sent a letter to you. Um, okay. I will find Ilda and... Yeah, she, um... she's just standing by the door. Okay, I tell, uh... We need to find a... We need to find a way to get into the observatory. The, the orc woman that sh isn't who she says she is. She has been, I don't know, possessed by a demonic spirit of some sort back in the demon waste. I have been searching for her for quite some time. The demon... demon waste? The demon wastes. Yeah. Yes. What? What is her name? Um. Hang on one sec. Yeah, I got the name down. Uh, Glacia, I believe. Yeah, Glacia. I, I was looking at the character sheet and I like copied it down. Uh, in that case, yeah. Yeah, Glacia. Glacia was her name, wasn't it? She. Uh. She like. She, uh. She like. Uh. Lost in therapy for a second. Said. Oh. That explains a lot. I, I've heard, uh, I've heard rumors of some sort of uh, overlord uh, that this place has been built on top of, but I didn't uh, know. I didn't know if it was real or not. I just hope that it's not real. Oh no! We have to stop her now. I agree. I agree. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Lonnie, you you also see that three other. Uh, Three more of uh, the uh, researchers here. Um, the uh, the dark-skinned elf, um, the um, what, the dwarf, um, and um, uh, and the tiefling seems to t be taking a bit of notice of you, but um, I shrug it up, but just, uh, but just glance at you, but didn't really seem to notice you. Meanwhile, I would like you to roll a um. An arcana check, intelligence. Sure thing. Uh, can I assist him with that? Since that's a skill I'm trained in, sorceress and all. Uh, I, I I should be fine. Um, um Celeste, maybe you can. Perhaps you can try to distract Plus them. eleven, so thirty-one. Because there are someone you notice uh, notice you that you shouldn't be here, Celeste. Perhaps oh, and that kid. Yeah, and that kid. Yeah, per. Yeah, someone uh, yeah needs a little persuading. <laughs> That's I'm good at. Alrighty, go ahead. Or deception. Your check was yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna roll persuasion because that's. Hello, Cap Charisma. Yep. All right, roll a seventeen. That's a plus eight. <clears throat> plus eight. So does a twenty-five do anything? Yes. Um. You managed to distract uh, some of the researchers, and they seem to be pretty happy about uh, what they're... They told you about the moons, the, the 12 remaining moons. And they and one of them points out, uh, remember, there used to be a 13th moon. And, <clears throat> and of course, <laughs> and of course, you know, Celeste is being all coquettish about this. Oh, tell me more. They're very eager to tell you more. Yeah, uh, because um, you start to start to start a conversation about the research, and they are very interested in your research. Yeah, in the <clears throat> research, and also Celeste Decolletage. Hello. <laughs> yeah, give me a second while I tap this down. So I'm typing down the. Uh, I'm gonna copy it and paste. So um, give me a second. And uh, yeah, the... Laura, and and uh, Lonnie, I would also like you to roll an intelligence check. Uh, intelligence check or intelligence save? Check. Okay, doke. Alright, 22. Alrighty. Uh... The construction seems to be backwards. The telescope is not meant to help vision outward. It seems to be built to bring something in. As, as you like to investigate the uh, uh, telescope. I, Lonnie mutters to herself, "Whoever built this doesn't know what they're doing with a freaking telescope. This, 
how, how it's the same thing if they're just going to be... It's, it's more like a summoning stone. What the heck is this? And um, this is what... Uh, th and these are the list of, of uh, moons that they told you to list. As you uh, leave, as you quickly and quietly leave the telescope, uh, Celeste has uh, relayed the information. And Ilda uh, approaches you and says, uh, oh, I'll see if I can get you to a door that... And she leads you to a door and takes you on a bit of a, a tour of the place in the meantime. Uh, she, she, she leads you to a door that seems to be carved into the mountain itself. It is inlaid in stone and has no handle. Spaced down the middle are four glass circles. Small glimpses through the door. Well, when the moon rises, the telescope absorbs the moonlight, sends a single beam toward the top circle of the door. And you should take a look at this. She points at the scientists that appeared over each of the other circles. At dawn, discover. At noon, the first. At night, stand vigil. Celeste considers this and also considers that she uh, now knows the name of every moon of Eberron. Oh, give me a second. So, there we go. This is the... Uh, so... <clears throat> Uh, so at dawn, discover. At dawn, discover. At noon, try first, and at night, stand vigil. So the first one. So the first one, discover. That would be Larvion, the moon of de the moon of the house of the moon of the house of detection. At noon, traverse. This would be Earth, the moon of the uh, house of passage. Stand, vi stand vigil. This would be Volt, the moon of the House of Warding, or uh, Olarun, the ho House of Sentinel. Oh no, no, yeah, you're right. Olarun would be, yeah, would be the more appropriate choice. Yeah, sent, yeah, stand vigil. Yeah, that would be the mark of Sentinel. Alrighty, um, you set the uh, you set the beams uh, of the moonlight pointing at each of the circles, the correct circles, and. The door starts to uh, starts to open, and the door starts to open, like slide open. Friend and enter. And I'm saying that out of character, by the way. Please be door. Please be door. Please be. Please be secret door. Please be secret door. Please be the door. Yay! So I I uh, I can help myself. I've been watching some of the Marvel movies. Oh, <laughs> and get your love. And and Rhodey just turns and Rhodey just turns to Nebula and says. So he's an, oh, he's an idiot. idiot. So yeah, so uh, upon this, um, uh, the Dragonborn and the Dark Skin Elf seems to notice and approaches you. They don't seem to be hostile, but they're curious. Uh, uh, though they are just curious. It was uh, which the Dragonborn and who? And the Dark Skin Elf. Uh, my name is it. My, my name is Ithros, head researcher. Says the Dark Skin Elf. Um, well, I noticed that you seem to be trying to alone, and maybe I would like to help. The Dragonborn also steps in, and, and it, Arc, Arcock, my petition, I also like to help, but I wouldn't want to uh, be with him if, you, if, you, if, you're, if I'm going to be there with you. Um, you also see uh, Ilda just like, hastily approaching, well, uh, it's just like, just, uh, just like, oh, just watching what's going on. You know, so, mm -hmm. so, uh, so the elf says, uh, you had to bring one of us in here. We couldn't stand each other, as you can see. And she's like, and they both throw daggers at each other. Now, now, kids, play nice. <laughs> well, uh, says, says the elf, he, he, has, he has a tendency to steal my work. Oh, uh, only that, uh, all that guy yeah, improved on them. Uh, the Dragonborn insisted. Yeah, you know, his, his his gray eyes stare, like squinted at at the elf. I wouldn't want to uh, be uh, be uh, have a, spend another second with him. 
Oh, oh Lonnie really? Goes ahead. L- Lonnie speaks up and, go- and goes, We're all here in the name of science. Just because you don't always get along doesn't mean you can't sh- uh, go ahead and share your discoveries. Uh, as long as he- you're getting proper credit, it doesn't really matter who improves on it. So why don't we all just cooperate for a minute? We can solve this. And we can all get back to focusing on the stars, you know, where our attention belongs. Hmm. A fair point, but now I'm not a fan of being over the elf, so... You, you Aww, get over but the elf is adorable! <laughs> but the elf is adorable! <laughs> Celeste says with a smile. Um, uh, Ilda just like raises her hand and says she just wanted to speak out. Yes. What's, what's up, my friend? Uh, if you... Well, if you ask me, um, I recommend you bring, um, uh, Ithros along. He seems to be more capable of what he might face inside. Um, uh, and and earlier, and uh, both the elf and the drug say that they will, uh, that that you will need their expertise in the dungeon. And he was like, just, uh, Ithros says, please, I need to go over there with you. There's... Something that I need in there before the uh, the telescope completes. I thought because uh, I would like to uh, and I'd like to speak to your orc, not you, her. B- uh, ch- uh, before uh, before the others, so I can bask in his glory. Glory, okay. Molly well, blinks a few times. Yeah. <clears throat> Celeste has gone from, you know, flirt, flirt, flirtatious to uh, thinking to her, thinking to herself, not aloud. Once again, I'm glad Mama brought her nine iron. Okay, so though, though outwardly, although outwardly, she's once again got a white knuckle grip on her staff. And you see, oh, not just like rubbing her a dependent on uh, around her neck. And she wants to us, maybe, maybe this planet has protected me from what influence that uh, that that orc has brought here. Well, per- well, perhaps you seem a little more with it than the other researchers. They just they just seem like they were to lunch. You can say you can say that. Uh, Lonnie would like to make a Arcana check on the necklace. Go ahead. Okay, uh, 22. Uh, this gleaming dark opal is nested in white metal, which reflects many colors. You kind of, uh, what was your check on it again? 22. You kind of recognize some of one of the properties for this brooch. It seems to, uh, strengthen a, uh, a wearer's will against, um, against charm and fear or, spell, or spells or effects. Yeah, charm. Yeah, a Celeste casting charm person on her would have not done squat. Would have been a lot more difficult. And that, yeah, everyone, and that too. One could be so lucky to be born a gnome. Anyways, uh, who do we trust to bring with us? At the very least, the uh, resistance to being charmed would make them would them relatively valuable. Um, it appears that Ethro seems to be in the more resist. Uh, appears to be the more resistant, as you can tell. He, de- he seems to be the least loopy out of all, out of all of it, and that's with the passive insight. I'm gonna say passive insight for whoever has the highest. Uh, my passive uh, insight is 13. My passive investigation is 18. Perception 16. Anyone else? Uh, passive insight um, is 12 pass- for me. All right. Uh, based on your casual glances, it seems like the uh, um, that the elf, the dark skinned elf, yeah, seems to be the more most in ground into uh, almost uh, like into reality, that sort of thing. Bring them, we'll bring them along. When you're gonna bring them along, he smiles. <laughs> right. He lets let's have a sigh of relief. As I, have, <clears throat> I have a plus seven to insight, so 17. So you know, is uh, yeah, so. You definitely know that he is the most lucid of of the two. 
The more that's that's the, we, will, we will be polite. So, though. which one is the more lucid, the dragonborn or the elf? The yeah. elf. Uh, we'll be polite and phrase it where we want the dragonborn to do the important role of guarding the door to make sure no one shuts it behind us. If you insist. And what about the girl? Did you do that? For... Thanks for doing that for us, cutie. I'm not a cutie. Aw, oh. oh, can't a girl have a type? He says nothing. Anyways. He says nothing. As for Ilda, um, she seems, uh, uh, she seems to want to go, but is hesitant in her steps. We're fine. Trust me. We're more likely to die first, and then you can run if things go sour. You'll be, you'll be okay. Well, persuasion check. Like, help me with this. Are we really gonna trust my plus one again? <laughs> Celeste. Oh yeah, nah. Cel yeah, Celeste will make that roll. Write that roll. What, what are you gonna tell her? Proficient. It, if you wanna, uh, uh, would you like to have her add to bring her along? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're bring we're, yeah we're bringing the elf yeah we're bringing the elf along aren't and we Ilda, yeah, yeah, so. Il and Ilda or and, yeah. and Ilda uh, the elf's new is it we can use your okay we could use your help we could use your help dear would you be so kind kind as to help look, help your angel mama and I rolled a ooh. 16 plus 8. That's gonna be a 24 all day. She nods a little hesitant, but I know how to I know how to defend myself. Uh, oh crap! I, she just have a, st a stat block. I gotta I gotta come up with one quickly. Hard to tell us that. Well, she's gonna be your ally along with um along with uh, along with the elf. So. I'm so yeah, you got another spellcaster in the form of Ilda. I'm gonna be use yeah, I'm gonna be using mage. Uh, I'm gonna be offering with it. I'm gonna be using the mage a stat block for Ilda. If that's if that's okay, just wanna just wanna be upfront. Yeah, yeah, of course. Alrighty, so yeah, <laughs> she uh, um she arms herself with the, she uh, carries the dagger. Always um always useful in case of an emergency, yeah. And she puts the dagger, uh, she sees the dagger. Uh, but for C, we should probably take one one less look around behind us to make sure none of the, uh, other researchers are, keep, are keeping watch on us. We don't want to be ambushed from behind. Okay. Uh, would you like to continue this uh, session, or uh, call, uh, call it a day, or... I'm okay with calling it a day, I need to get... Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll stop here. Yeah, and with that, we uh, we put the session to end. So, how was it? I liked it. Anyone else? Interesting, interesting what monsters. Right? We're gonna see where. Let's see what this goes. Yeah, indeed. Even. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, nice know, see, it's nice to see. It's nice to see your backstory being. Uh, yeah, it, this one just basically sort of came out on the spot. Just like I was like kid, taking taking a uh, sleep, and it's like, huh? Matigos from Crypt TV. Why not use that? And yes, they are. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say up front, they are not of. of um, in my head, in my Eberron, I'm gonna say they are not natives. They seem to come come from someplace else, a parallel world, as it were. Mm -hmm. Parallel material plane. Just a bit of a spoiler, as a, as a bit of meta knowledge. Your character doesn't know where they came from, but just so you know, he came from. Over there. Yes, over there, over to that place where it's run by uh by what's their face? Yeah, there's a passage in Lords and Ladies that's uh very nearly that. Let me. See. I'm, I actually want. I actually want to. I want to hear this. I'm actually kind of interested. Yeah, it actually so, kind of reminded me of the um, uh, what was that game? What was that uh, horror game on the PlayStation? The one with the butterfly effects and everything. The, the what? Of the what effects? Um. Until dawn. Yeah, until dawn. Yes, 
the, with the Wendigo, so I love that game. I bought that I played it. It was a, it was a really good game, and um, Supermassive Game have have made more games. Um, recently, the uh, Dark Pictures, uh, Dark Pictures Anthology. Um, they've released uh, Mad Medine like last year, and they will be releasing um, Little Hope uh, later this month, around the same time as uh, the Mandalorian, the second season. This is the way. I'm a little surprised that. Uh, to, uh, okay, so. And uh, with that, we're going to be uh, raiding so on. That's uh, so all we, we can all be here next time, and we may be seeing a, a fourth a fourth player uh, pretty soon. So. Oh. Okay. I found. <clears throat> I found the. I found the passage. Okay. There used to be such simple directions back in the days before they invented parallel universes: up and down, right and left, backward and forward, past and future. Normal directions don't work in the multiverse, which has far too many dimensions for anyone to find their way. So new ones have to be invented so that the way can be found. And like the way. east of the sun, west of the moon, or behind the north wind, or at the back of beyond, or there and back again, or beyond the fields we know. Sometimes there's a shortcut, a door or a gate, some standing stones, a tree cleft by a lightning, a filing cabinet. Be just a spot on some moorland somewhere. Place where there, very nearly here. Nearly, but not quite. There's enough leakage to make pendulums swing and psychics get nasty headaches. Give a house a reputation for being haunted to make the occasional pot hurl across a room. There's enough leakage to make the drones fly guard. Oh yes, the drones. There are things called drone assemblies. Sometimes, on fine summer days, the drones from hives for miles around will congregate in some spot and fly circles in the air, buzzing like tiny early warning systems, which is what they are. Bees are sensible. It's a human word. But bees are creatures of order, and programmed into their very genes is a hatred of chaos. Some people knew where, what, knew where such a spot was. If they had experience of what happens when here and there become entangled, then they might, if they knew how, mark such a spot with certain stones. I hope that enough daft buggers would take it as a warning and keep away. <laughs> I love for Terry Pratchett. So is that it? Yep. Yeah, that's the passage. Not not going to lie. Half of that sounded like um, the marketing spiel for Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's mo a little moder modern for a fantasy novel, but, you know, it's Sir Terry. He was a wily old cuss. Yeah, we're all going to miss him. He's been gone for ten years, I think. Not t no, not ten no, not ten years. Less than four, actually. He died in twenty sixteen. Oh, shit. Okay. That's 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 a bit of a dark note to end on. So anyway, did, well, he, well, his well, his uh, last book, The Shepherd's Crown, the uh, final book of the Tiffany Aching Cycle, was uh, released six months after his, after his passing. Alrighty, and with that, we'll um, end this stream. So have a good day, everybody. Ah, you do the same, brother. All right, see ya.